Ten years ago, my next guest walked out of maximum security prison after being sentenced to 20 years behind bars. The odds for a successful future were against her. Today, she runs a nonprofit helping women coming out of prisons alongside a thriving catering company. From Just Soul Catering and Reentry Rocks, let's say hi to Sharon Richardson. What's up, Sharon? Kelly, how are you? I am so good. I, I love my job even more now because we're all like so isolated. So I get to talk to people. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. So, hey, I mean, goodness, you have the craziest, like coolest story in the end. And it's so inspiring and empowering. So can you tell us, first of all, like about your time in prison? Like what, what was that like? And how did you not get defeated and yet get inspired by the time you got out? So I went into prison in 1990, came home in 2010, and I was charged with murder in the second degree of killing my abusive boyfriend who abused me really bad and molested my daughter. And while I was inside, I just took advantage of every resource there was to make myself a better person. And that was getting my associate's degree, my bachelor's degree. I worked for the superintendent. I worked in the puppy program. I just did everything that I knew was important in creating who I would be today. I didn't know what the outcome would be, but I knew that I had to do things that would, you know, produce a, a, a better person. Yeah, I mean, way to be productive with all those degrees. <laughs> I'm like, people on the outside aren't getting degrees like that and doing all this. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> what was life? I mean, it had to have been obviously a, a, a change for you, like emotionally um, and mentally, all those things, like for getting out 10 years ago. Like, what was that like first stepping out and going, okay, so I'm going to do this? What was that like? So when I first came home, my heat, my feet hit the ground running, right? And this is what my pastor always says to me, you just haven't stopped. And I think about the good points and I think about the struggle. And, you know, um, there was this wonderful woman named Sister Mary Nerney. She was like a civilian nun and she had always been in my life while I was inside. And she worked for a organization called Steps to End Family Violence. And she wanted to do this reentry program, but she only wanted it run by someone who was formerly incarcerated. So I came out just in time for that. And so we pulled together and we created this wonderful program and it was just a, a master reentry program like no other in the state for women coming out who had domestic violence cases like myself and I just kind of like paved the way and just used all of my experience and everything that I had gone through to help women come through the program and trust me you know and believe that what we were doing was to help them to not be a victim anymore to not feel judged and to be a better person. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's one thing for someone to say it to you. It's another yeah. for someone to say it to you that's lived it. Um, no, it's, it's, it's true. Had it's true. You, she was waiting for someone perfect like you to help people accomplish what you've accomplished and kind of be the light at the end of the tunnel of like, dude, you can do this too. We're all capable. <laughs> that's, that's an amazing thing. So five years ago, you actually created Just Soul Catering. So how did that happen? Yeah, so, um, you know, after going through all of the different struggles that I had gone through, you know, like facing certain barriers, like with housing and things of that nature, you know, it takes me back to that too. Like my dad, I had came home and I lived with him. And when he passed away, he had a reverse mortgage. So I had to do everything that I could do to try to save the house and was undefeated. So um, in working under a, a Steps to End Family Violence, I ran across a lot of people who were directing me into different you know, paths. And I got involved with the Vagina Monologues. And there was a producer there and she was like, oh, you should become an entrepreneur. And I was like, what? How can I do that? So she directed me to an organization called Defy Ventures. And Defy Ventures was an organization that helped men and women become uh, uh, entrepreneurs. And so I had to come up with an idea. So I thought about the fact that I love food and I love people. And when you put those two together, you get this wonderful catering company. And then I was inspired by so many other people in talking. And they were like, you should make this a justice involved catering company. You know, make it where women can actually come through the program after they come out and learn how to do what you do. And so, yeah, that's how Just So came to be. It's, that's amazing. You have such a great testimony. It's, it's so empowering. Um, so, so tell me about, you talked a little bit about Reentry Rocks, right? That's the nonprofit, right? Yes. Yeah, so Reentry Rocks is my 501c3. It's a nonprofit organization that helps 
women who've gone through the criminal justice system. And so I didn't want my program to just be any reentry program. I wanted it to be special. And how could I connect it to Just So Catering? So we created the whole counseling base and, you know, everything that we could do to give back and teach women, you know, how to reenter. But then we started the Entrepreneurship Culinary Internship Program, which is a 12-week class, you know, um, 12-week group that you come to and you learn how to be either an entrepreneur, work in the food industry, you could do special catering, you could do event planning, whatever it is. And so when you put Just So and Reentry Rocks together like sister entities, it's kind of like the Paul Newman model. He kind of did that for profit, nonprofit model. Yeah. Yeah. And it just works. You graduate. It's a great model. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's a food handler certificate. And then you can just come in and work, you know, but it's a lot of work. It's, it, I mean, it's much more than what I'm talking about right now. No, I mean, and also on top of that, I can only imagine um, it must be difficult no matter how hard you work. I, I imagine right off the bat, you trying to get jobs or trying to get a place or trying to do many things. It doesn't matter how much you do. Sometimes people always stop you when they see a record, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's awesome so, that you're doing I'm, that for these these women. Like, that, that, that's what I'm saying. It's the light in the tunnel. It's like, you have no idea what people's stories are. I mean, gosh, somebody was molesting your child and beating you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, who knows what anyone would do in that situation, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's definitely difficult. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, getting a job, finding housing, trying to present yourself, coming out, once people look and see that you have a record, they still hold it against you. You know, it's very hard to find housing. It's very hard to get a job. But with Reentry Rocks and Just So Catering, all we want to know is, is can you come and turn that spoon, open up that oven, present yourself as a good person, giving back, and you're hired. We're not going to hold your record against you when it comes to Reentry Rocks and Just So Catering. And that, that's so beautiful because it instills such confidence and, and, you know, and giving someone those skills and teaching them that and caring, like, you know, yes. just, just like caring about someone outside yourself, that, that kind of thing really goes such a long way. She's all set up and ready to show us how to make her summer soul shrimp tacos. Say that five times fast. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sharon, so you say soul food is more than just a style of cooking, right? Yes, it is. Soul food is more than just a style of cooking. It's being able to be a chef and to be able to know how to take something from another culture and make it yours. So people say, well, tacos, is that soul food? Yes, it's soul food because when you take that shrimp and put it into the barbecue sauce and serve it at a barbecue, that's what goes on. So oh we're going to start by making All right, let's get started. Okay. So I have my oil on so that we can flip around the taco, but we're going to make the taco, I mean the salsa. So okay. what you want to do is you want to put some pineapples in. Ooh, wait. You want to put some red onions in. I love onions. I tried to dice them up. Oh, got some cilantro. Get it. Okay. I got some tomatoes here. Yes. All right, and then my mouth is watering. Yes, that squeeze of lemon. You see that? I love lemon. Okay, so I want you to know that I have some already made. <laughs> I love, thank you, TV magic. Okay, so we're gonna put that to the side. So now, the shrimp. So the shrimp, when it's raw, right? You want to take it and put it in some flour. Drown it. You want to put it into some breadcrumbs, and it gets dropped right into the oil. But guess what? I have some shrimp already made. So how long do you dunk it for? I'm curious. So we dunk it in there for like, it maybe takes a, like maybe three to four minutes because shrimp okay. don't take a lot. Yeah. But now remember, size is important. These are small shrimps, right? So they didn't take long. But if you have like the Colossian shrimps, the big large shrimp, they take a little longer. Okay, cool. Let's, now what do we do? Yum. Now we're going to do our taco. So okay. these are the soft tacos, right? They're very bendable, but they taste really good. They bubble up. Okay. Wait till it bubbles up. All right. Yeah. And what we do is we put it over here. Okay. And then the first thing we actually do is we add some cheese. Of course. The, uh, the, hollo, um, the chipotle. The Not gouda there. cheese. It's really good. Did you say chipotle gouda cheese? Yes. The gouda is my favorite kind of cheese. Oh my. I love God. it. And you know we can go with mac and cheese. I will do it. Mac and cheese tastes amazing. Okay, so now your shrimps. 
Your shrimps go into the sauce, the barbecue sauce. This is important. Mm, I'm okay. mm. And I'm gonna put like three of these in here. Yes. One, My mouth two, is three. full on watering. Three fit. Three happen to fit. Okay. Right. And, and you put your salt that's on. Really, really, <laughs> that's really, really important. Okay. So then you put your coleslaw. Now you can use your own regular coleslaw that you can make from scratch, or you can do like I did for this. I just went and bought some coleslaw that was already made. Okay, awesome. And you put your coleslaw on here. And then you can drizzle some more sauce on it because I like a lot of sauce. Me too. Ooh, wait. I sometimes feel like the, the, the meat then, of the dish is just the vessel for the sauce. <laughs> then you put your salsa. You see this? Yes, you I do. This? Yes, I do. And I actually, I this is crazy, but I just happen to have one of your finished tacos here because they want to be able to taste it. And I'm very excited. My mouth is watering. So let's, let's do this together because look, I got mine all ready. Okay, here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Ready? You ready? You ready? Yes. Ready? Let's go. Okay, here we go. One, two, oh. oh my God. That is so good. Oh my God. This is so good. Thank you so much, Sharon. This welcome, is awesome. You're welcome. Well, thank you so much. And for those of you at home, if you want to try making these tacos, which you should because they're awesome, head to the Kelly Clarkson Show Facebook page to get the recipe right now. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my channel. Please don't make me keep going.